Hello friends, in today's uh, video, let's create a fun, uh, friendly uh, ghost here in ZBrush, right? So to get started, what I'm gonna do is, um, as I usually do, I'm gonna go to my light box and grab this uh, Dynamax 128. So you can do the same. And the next step that I wanna do is, I would like to use um, dynamic cloth to generate the uh, cloth for, for the ghost or the sheet. So for that, we don't really need uh, our DynoX to be this dense, 43,000 points. So let's go to Geometry, and let's go to uh, Z Remesher, and let's just turn this down way uh, down to like maybe a thousand or one, right? And uh, if you wanna watch what happens, you can turn on your uh, Polyframe, and then just do Z Remesh, right? So we're gonna go from 43,000 to something around 1800. I think that's a little bit better for uh, collision. Even if you have a super fast computer, we don't really need uh, 43,000 points. Um, you could even dial this even, uh, you can dial this down even more by saying half and do another Z remesh. And that takes it down to 768. So that's pretty much perfect for what we're, uh, what we're gonna do next. All right, so I'm gonna jump out of Polyframe. I'm gonna go to my sub tool and then I'm gonna insert a uh, plane. So this is gonna be my uh, sheet, right? I'm gonna grab my uh, move tool and holding on the shift key, I can rotate this uh, 90 degrees and bring this up and of course scale this up. Initially, I wanna scale it just a little bit um, going past the, the, the sphere. So maybe this is sort of the volume of the sphere, right, about here. So maybe just do, you know, just a little more. Like don't do something like this, that's a little too crazy. I would say maybe about double the size of the uh, sphere, right? So you have something around these lines. All right, once you do that, let's do uh, this. Let's go to geometry and let's go to um, dynamic subdivision and let's turn that on, okay? And if you uh, look real close, uh, holding down the old key and left mouse button, you can uh, zoom in. Let's uh, pay attention to the thickness of the sheet. So right now there's clearly no uh, thickness whatsoever. So turning the dynamic on will allow us to also adjust the thickness of this guy. And I want just a little bit thickness, maybe not too much, but something along these lines, right? So you have something uh, interesting to look at. All right, really cool. Uh, the next step would be go to your uh, Dynamics uh, tab, right? I have mine actually just dragged on the side here. And let's talk about this. So uh, if I go back to Subtools, and we could just move this up if we want, just for the sake of keeping track of it. So we have our sphere and we have our sheet. But um, in the Dynamics, uh, let's leave the strength on one. The firmness, uh, the firmness, I think we could do two or even three. Let's do two initially. And uh, self collision, I'm gonna turn on uh, to one. I'm gonna leave floor collision off because as this is bending, I don't really want it to interact uh, with, the, with the floor. I only want it to interact with the sphere, okay? So I'm gonna leave floor collision off. And um, gravity, gravity needs to stay on, right? Because we want the sheet to be pulled towards the floor. That's great. Um, the strength of the gravity, I'm gonna set it to maybe, initially, let's just do something like two, so we can have it nice and slow. Um, and let's see, what else can we do? And definitely need to turn on collision volume, right? So turn that on. And that's going to calculate the collision between our sheet and the sphere. And next, I'm going to simply uh, run the simulation. So as I run the simulation, you can see the sheet is gonna start falling and kind of uh, enveloping or grabbing the sphere underneath, creating these really cool uh, folds, right? Which would be really difficult to sculpt, but because ZBrush has this amazing simulation uh, built in, we can just take advantage of it. And I'm just gonna let it fall um, even more. If you wanted to speed this up, you could turn on your uh, gravity to be just a little bit stronger. Mine is a two. You could set it to maybe, you know, five, and that would be obviously a lot faster. 
and I can even do it uh, even uh, halfway. So I can switch this to five and run the simulation. You can see that it's also stretching it down, right? Uh, very nice. So let's let's go with something like this for our initial uh, initial uh, simulation. So I uh, I like this. I think this is great. But I would like to do two things. I would like to uh, have one version for the hands and one for the body, right? So this one is going to be my hands one. So I like this. So I'm going to go ahead and say duplicate. And if you want it, you can even name this hand. It's up to you. But um, and I'm going to hide it. All right, and then for the body, I'm gonna select this layer and turn my uh, gravity maybe to, let's go to like seven. All right, and let's uh, turn the firmness, firm, uh, firmness to like three and run the simulation. And you can see what's happening. It's stretching even more, right? And it's becoming even longer. And we can keep playing with this. Let's go to nine and maybe four. And stretch it even more so now this is uh, gonna be the body of my uh, ghost so it's a little bit different than the hands because the hands you can see are a little shorter right all right really cool so I'm gonna hide the uh, sphere I don't need this anymore and now for the hand what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my um, scale and just simply scale it and maybe uh, move it to the side and let's decide where we want the hands for the ghost to be. So maybe they're, you know, he's trying to scare you, right? So he's uh, he's kind of bringing both of his uh, hands up in the air. Now, uh, one interesting thing is if we, if we jump out of perspective, we can see that this looks too close to each other, right? You could see that this is um, in some way a copy of that, right? And maybe uh, to make it a little more interesting, we could turn this and make it look just a little bit different, right? So maybe it looks something like this. And the one uh, thing that I am looking forward, uh, that I need is, you see how these, uh, the sheet is kind of intersecting into this larger part? I need that, so I'm gonna be using this to connect the two. So maybe do the same. If you have like a larger piece there, just make sure that it's kind of uh, connected, all right? So now we have something like this. And this is great. Now uh, let's take our move brush, change the scale or the size of the brush, and let's just pull this piece in. So I'm gonna pull this uh, piece in to go into the larger part of the sheet, but as, as, at the same time, I don't really want this piece to kind of follow. So make sure you only um, grab this middle part. And that's going to be essentially our shoulder, right? Our shoulder is going to connect. So we're going to um, blend these two in a second. But we're going to go from the head of the ghost to the shoulder and then the arm. But I do want to make sure that these pieces kind of stay straight and separate. All right, so do the same thing, uh, uh, same on, on your side. And if we wanted to, we can even sculpt it even more and just do something like that. So there's like a little curve, right? I think that looks pretty nice. All right, cool. So uh, now let's flip this over. So I'm gonna do a uh, mirror and weld and put one on the other side as well. If you're not sure where mirror, mirror and weld button is located, um, if you press control and hover over any one of these buttons in ZBrush, it's gonna show you where something is. So on the bottom it says right there, it's in geometry. Uh, and I know it's in uh, modified topology, mirror and weld. So you can find that uh, button as well clone your hand to the other side. Now you have two of them. Really nice. So uh, what's next? Next, let's just grab the uh, head of the ghost and maybe we can uh, sculpt this just a little bit more. So I'm gonna make my brush a little large, press X to change, uh, to activate my symmetry. And let's just maybe make this a little more looking like a head of the ghost, right? So take your time and just sculpt to what uh, you think looks good maybe it doesn't need to be so uh, round right so it's a little more it's a little different than the uh, the hands so I even like something like this a little more pointy all right nice uh, next I need to take uh, both of these layers and merge them into one right so before I do that I do need to make sure that my sheet um, remember we turn the dynamic on but we want to bake bake in this uh, thickness 
into the sheet. So to do that, I'm going to say apply and that's going to kind of bake the thickness into, into the sheet and it's no longer being dynamically generated. Now it's an actual moldable or a sculptable mesh. Let's do the same thing here. Uh, let's go ahead and do apply. Go back to the sub tool. And now let's just take this top layer and merge it down with the, uh, with the hands one, right? I'm gonna say okay. And now both of these are in the same layer, which now allows us to um, blend these together, right? So right now you can see they're clearly uh, separate. How do we mold them together? What to do to do that? Uh, we just need to turn this into Dynamesh. But here's the tricky part. Right now you are at 99,000 uh, points, active points. You want to make sure that when you turn your Dynamesh on, you want to pay attention to the thickness, and you don't want to destroy it, right? So if you do something super low, like 128, and do Dynamesh, you can see that the edges totally get destroyed, and they no longer look um, appealing, right? So I'm going to do uh, Control Z and instead let's just turn this up a little bit higher. Let's go to something like 500 and do uh, Dynamesh. So that gave me uh, 3.8 million points but you can see that my edges are still nice and clean which I uh, like a lot, right? Um, if you wanted to get rid of some of that uh, pattern that you're seeing as from the grid, just simply polish it. That should get rid of it. And if you're wondering where the polish uh, slider is, that's located in uh, deformation. So you can find it there. All right, and you can see that uh, that kind of get, gets rid of that uh, grid that you uh, saw earlier. And now it's, if you zoom in, you can see it's really nice and smooth, right? Very nice. So the next thing I would like to do is holding down the shift key, I'm going to smooth out some of this connection here to uh, make it a little more uh, blended, right? So go ahead and do the same thing on your end. Make sure your active symmetry is on. And depending on how much resolution you have, this might be, uh, you know, take a little bit longer or slower. But in my case, I do have 3.8 million. So I had mine is kind of heavy. So I'm just going to take my time and just kind of blend these together. And you can see how it's beautifully blending together, making it look like it's one mesh, right? Very nice. All right, let's say uh, you are happy and this is looking good. Of course, if you have any touch-ups, like in my case, you know, maybe uh, some of these could be hand sculpted. So feel free to do that. Now, one thing I would like to do, uh, just to make it even more looking uh, dynamic or organic, I'm going to turn off my active symmetry. I'm going to uh, grab my move brush and I'm going to take some of these and just move them way down. So maybe I'm not going to do all four. I'm just going to do two. So to make it feel even more kind of random and organic. So I'm going to do these two and then I'm going to grab my pinch brush, make it kind of large and just maybe pinch these in and make it uh, a little more uh, flowy, right? I think that looks uh, even more interesting. We can even do the same thing with these as well. If you feel like they're a little too round. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with the hands. And to speed this up, I am going to turn the symmetry on. Uh, and let's just make some of these maybe a, just a little bit longer. The one in the back as well. And then do the same thing, grab our pinch and maybe pinch them in. All right, very cool. So I like that, that looks nice. If you wanted to break the symmetry a little bit, of course, just um, turn the symmetry off and maybe we can make one longer, another one shorter. It's totally uh, up to you, right? So it doesn't look like it's an exact uh, clone. I think that's uh, that's important. It makes it a little more interesting. All right, really cool. So uh, what do we do next? Well, the next thing we could do is we can of course preview this and see how uh, nice that looks. That looks pretty cool. Uh, next, let's just add some uh, eyes to our ghost, right? So to add some eyes, um, I vote for using uh, booleans. So I'm going to uh, say insert, and I'm just going to insert a um, a cylinder and we could we have a couple to choose from let's just go with, with this uh, top one 
and you can see what that looks like. If you press Control uh, D a couple times, you can see that it kind of smooths out, which is great. Uh, let's go ahead and decide on the scale of our eye. So holding down the Shift key, I'm gonna select uh, Move here and just rotate this 90 degrees and kind of snap it into place. Then I can uh, kind of scale it and decide where I want my eye to be. Maybe it could be a little bit longer. Decide on the uh, size, right? So maybe some, let's do just do one first. So we'll do the left one. And another thing we could do is of course, angle it a little better, maybe put it into place. And let's say I'm happy with this being my left eye, right? Now, uh, I definitely want two, so I'm going to do a mirror involved once again. And it's telling me to get rid of my subdivision level. So let's get, go ahead and delete uh, subdivision levels and do a mirror involved. Now we have two. Now, it's totally an artistic uh, preference if you want these touching or not. Uh, if you don't, just move it aside a little bit and then do mirror and weld. Of course, delete mirror and weld. Now you can see that they're not uh, touching. Maybe that's a little bit better. It's totally up to you. Uh, let's go ahead and center this. And now we can change the size still and maybe move them in position. And now to subtract them and to see what the hole actually looks like, uh, let's turn on this little button here and make sure that your live booleans are turned on, right? Now we can, of course, at this point, decide if we want to change this. We can even grab the move brush and adjust some of these. Maybe you don't want it to be exactly the same. Maybe one could be a little shorter. The other one could be a little longer. Totally uh, up to you. All right. I think that looks great. Um, if you want to bake this in and you no longer want to adjust this and you are uh, happy with it, just simply go to um, Booleans and click on Make Boolean Mesh, right? Now, the way Boolean Mesh works is whatever uh, layer is visible, that's the one that's gonna create a, uh, a baked version of it, right? So like, for example, if I had the sphere turned on and I clicked Make Boolean Mesh, that's gonna be included in the mesh. So keep, in, keep that in mind. So whatever is uh, visible, this is gonna affect Make uh, Boolean Mesh button, okay? All right, uh, let's go ahead and decide what, what else we want. Let's render this up. I think that looks really cool. I'm gonna go to my uh, filters. And as I always say, I like to turn on the sharpen and just maybe bump this radius up a little bit. And there you have it. So this is pretty much it. You can even add a mouth, right? And maybe do uh, a mouth for this guy. Uh, and then the other thing you could do is, of course, um, you can do a couple things. You can go to geometry and do Z remesher if you want to maybe animate this guy, right? You can create a, a cleaner uh, mesh and bring into something like Maya and add some joints and have him fly around, maybe in the game or something. Uh, another thing you could do is go to uh, Z plugins and do uh, decimation. And maybe, you know, if you want to add texture or whatever else to this guy, you can just decimate him and make him low res that way. So a couple different uh, options. But I just wanted to show you guys uh, kind of how to get to this uh, place and uh, just kind of have fun. All right. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video and I will see you in the next one.